So, Professor Sargent, you've been working for a long time with the uh, colloidal quantum dots. So, what uh, in this paper is the the new discovery that you want to bring forward? We've known for a while that colloidal quantum dots offer the capability to make a solar cell that makes the the very best use of both the visible and the infrared light contained in the sun's broad spectrum. Uh, we know we've known for a while that the way to do that is to make uh, a visible semiconductor and stack it. Uh, with an infrared semiconductor. Uh, what we haven't known until now is how to do that stacking, is how to make a layer that connects together the bottom visible cell and the top infrared cell in a way that is efficient and that doesn't produce any damage to any of those layers. What we discovered in our reporting in this Nature Photonics paper uh, is what's called a graded recombination layer, which is a new combination of materials and really a new device concept that allows us to make a tandem and ultimately multi-junction solar cells based on colloidal quantum dots. Okay. And what's the advantage of that over creating a single layer that's capable of uh, absorbing light from across the spectrum? Single junction solar cells, so solar cells based on a single semiconductor band gap, um, they don't make uh, the, the very best use of the most energetic of the sun's photons, the visible and the ultraviolet photons. Uh, what are called tandem or multi-junction solar cells allow us to, if you like, treat every photon as special. They allow us to make a layer that is particularly attuned to the large energy available in the visible photons, and then another layer that, that sops up the abundant resource that are the infrared photons and it combines them together. The consequence of that is from a, a basic theoretical standpoint, the fundamental upper bound on the limits of a single junction solar cell operating under one sun, so operating under regular solar illumination, the upper bound is 31%. Of course, reality people do less well than the upper bound, but they're fundamentally limited by the upper bound of 31% solar power conversion efficiency. But in principle, if you could make a perfect tandem solar cell, you could reach up to 42% solar power conversion efficiency. If you could make a perfect triple junction solar cell, you could reach up towards 49% upper bound on the solar power conversion efficiency. Uh, you know, we don't achieve those upper bounds. Nobody else does either. But really, by making better use of the, sun's, of, of the spectral components that reside within the sun's broad spectrum, we are raising the upper limit, the asymptote, on the possibility for these solar cells. Right. And your hope is that in the end you're going to be able to produce not only a more efficient solar cell, but a cheaper solar cell, right? So all of the work that we do is premised on the value of being able to make a solution processable solar cell. People sometimes informally call this a paint-on solar cell because the materials out of which all our solar cells are made are synthesized in solution. So we make uh, essentially a paint that consists of semiconductor particles suspended uh, in a colloid or dispersed in, in, in a solvent the way paint is. Uh, and then we apply them essentially by coating them onto a solid substrate, letting the solvent dry, uh, evaporate, and we're left with a thin solid film. Uh, and so that approach of making these solar cells at room temperature, uh, under ambient conditions, uh, just using basically coating technologies, uh, enables a much lower cost structure for these solar cells. Right. And so that means that down the road you're going to see these on the back of cell phones, on the back of tablets, and, and larger surfaces, right? So one of the really attractive things about making these photovoltaic materials, solar materials, uh, through these, these solution casting processes is you can put them on a flexible substrate. That has a couple of advantages. One of them is simply the method of manufacturing on a flexible substrate. This is kind of like printing newspaper. And so you have the potential to make, uh, even for large area solar cells, for rooftop solar cells, for building integrated solar cells, you can make those in a much more low cost fashion as a result of the reduced manufacturing costs. In addition though, once you've made it on a flexible material, now you have a conformable substrate. You have a solar harvesting material that you can integrate into the form factor of uh, parts of your car or of parts of your tablet or of your, uh, of your cell phone. Uh, and so now you have something that can seamlessly integrate with the devices that we carry around with us, devices that urgently need more power. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your uh, discovery with us today.